Hey everyone, Rob here from Gunfather Milsim, and today we're going to talk about painting guns. It's a real quick tutorial on how I do it. Um, I enjoy painting my guns. I play mostly woodland. I believe it does give you an advantage when you're playing in woodland to, uh, you know, kind of add paint to your gun to break up the profile and give you a little blending in advantage. Uh, today, painting the Saima SR25. Project's pretty much done. Got all the parts where I want them. So now we're going to paint it. So. Understand that when you paint an airsoft gun, you're basically cutting the value in half because no one wants to buy a used airsoft gun that is painted. And that's not half off the retail, that's half off the used airsoft gun price, which is about half. So you're looking at basically a, a quarter of what you would get retail. Not that any airsoft gun is an investment, but just understand that if you're painting a gun, make sure it's one you like because you're gonna have a hard time getting rid of it later. First thing we're gonna talk about is what kind of paint you use. I use a rattle can, rust-oleum camouflage paint. Find these in any Walmart around the country. Um, this is the lightest color I use. I prefer brown tones to green tones. That's just a personal preference because I want a flat, dark earth my life. Um, green is obviously a, a good option. This is just how I do it. This is, uh, the color here is khaki. They also make a tan, but I, I found the tan is so light it almost looks white. So khaki is the right level of tan I want for my base coat. This is what you're gonna use the most, by the way, is your lightest color. Uh, the next, well, my darkest color I use is also Rust-Oleum Camo. This one is Earth Brown. It's pretty dark. This is the darkest one I use. And the medium color I use is Satin. It's just brown. It's also a Rust-Oleum product. Once again, you can find it at Walmart. I like using three different colors just to kind of get a nice blend. The thing I'm going to use to make my pattern, my camouflage pattern, is just a laundry bag. I bought this at Walmart. These are cheap. Um, this one works great. I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Quick note on environment. Obviously you want to paint in a well-ventilated area uh, outside or in an open garage, but also you need the right temperature. If it's too cold, the paint is not gonna adhere to the gun. It's also not gonna dry very quickly. So it has to be at least above freezing. Today was an abnormally warm day for November. It was 75 degrees. Right now it's about 60. It's perfect for painting. So that's gonna work well for us. Next thing we're gonna talk about is prep. The more time you spend prepping the gun you're gonna paint, the better it's gonna look. Spend twice as much time prepping as you actually do painting, maybe even more. First thing you wanna do is clean the gun. Uh, most guns aren't overly dirty. It doesn't have to be absolutely spotless. You don't have to scrub and get in every little nook and cranny, but if there's any dust or dirt on the surface of the gun, get it off, brush it off, get a wet cloth, wipe it off, okay? It doesn't have to be spotless. If there's any adhesive on here from maybe it came with a sticker from the factory, you're gonna to wanna to get that off because that's gonna look really weird when, it, when you put the paint over it. It's gonna dry differently, it's not gonna adhere right, and you're gonna be able to see the different, you're gonna see that paint, it's not gonna look right on the gun. You're gonna to wanna to use some sort of gum off or acetone or whatever and get that adhesive off of there. As far as the optic goes, if you do have an optic, anything you don't want covered in paint, you're gonna to have to cover up with masking tape. In this case, I got the Vortex Viper 2 here. I put blue masking tape on the ocular lens, the objective lens, and my magnifier indicator because I don't want any paint on that. I want to see that after the fact. If you do get paint on that, not a big deal. You can always take it off later. Better off do a little bit of prep now, not have to worry about it. Uh, the barrel, you can see it in there. I always stick a, take a Q-tip, put a little bend in it, stick it in the barrel. Not a lot of paint's gonna get in there anyway, but that'll just ensure that no paint gets in the inner barrel whatsoever. Now you'll notice on this gun, the barrel is already painted the, the khaki, the lightest color I'm gonna use. That's because uh, this rail system was kind of a bear to put on here, it required a lot of modification. I didn't wanna take it back off. So before I installed it the last time, I already pre-painted that barrel my lightest color, so I don't have to worry about it and I can just, just go. Uh, other thing you wanna note is when you are painting stuff like your flip-up sights, you have to paint them both up and down. I don't care which order you do it in. Okay, also don't forget your safety. Move your safety and paint it both ways so there's paint on both sides underneath that safety so you don't have a big blank spot under your safety. Even if you do, really not that big a deal. So, now that I've covered all the prep, uh, I'm gonna switch to my handheld camera, go up in the garage, open the door, and I'm gonna show you this, uh, this technique and see what you think. Okay, so here we are in the garage. Guns all prepped, ready to go. Got my cardboard down so I don't make too big a mess. Obviously gonna paint a magazine too. Now, first thing we're gonna do is start with our lightest color. As I stated before, 
is going to be this khaki here. Now, the key to painting guns is to be patient. If you try to put too much paint on, it's going to it's going to build up and it's going to run and it's going to make a big mess and it's going to be hard to fix, okay? Err on the side of using too little paint as opposed to too much. Now, when you apply your spray paint, you want to apply it nice and even and you start moving your hand and you spray and stop and keep moving your hand. Do not go like this spraying back and forth like that because on either end of that spray it's going to build up heavier and that's where it's going to run. So you want to do nice even strokes. Keep the can about a foot away from what you're spraying, maybe a little bit closer. And you're just going to do nice even strokes just like that. You do not have to get everything in the first coat. The big mistake guys end up doing is they try to put too much paint on in that first coat. It ends up building up. And it starts to run and it ends up looking like shit. Take your time. I'm going go under here, I'm gonna try to get under this rail system. Got a little on the floor. Girlfriend's gonna have to deal with it. Go all the way around the gun. Get the top here. But just nice, even strokes. Once again, air on the side of too little paint as opposed to too much. Easy to come back later. Take your time. Let it dry. Important to note on little stuff like the uh, magazine release or even your rail system, you're gonna have to hit that from multiple angles if you wanna get in all the nooks and crannies of those things. So take your time, it's gonna take a while. Hit the magazine real quick. It usually takes me a good two or three coats per side of the gun on this first coat. And this is the most important one. This is your base layer. So if you do this well, everything else is gonna look good. If you do this like shit, might as well give it up because the whole damn gun's gonna look like shit. Once again, this turret right here on the side of the scope, hit it from the other angle so we make sure we get all the spots. That's about as much as I want to put on on a first coat on this side. So now I'm going to wait a good, probably 30 minutes for this to dry. Flip it over, do the other side, wait 30 minutes, flip it back over, and then just double check and make sure there's no spots I missed. Obviously this is going to take a while. Lucky for you guys, you get to skip it and uh, fast forward to the good stuff. All right. So here we are several hours later. I've painted both sides of the rifle, both sides of the magazine, and now we're ready to start adding our pattern. Now here's where the uh, netting is gonna come in. I'm gonna start with the magazine because it's easiest. And we're just gonna lay our netting over the magazine like so. Now you don't want it to be really tight against the magazine like that. I've seen some people put rubber bands around whatever they're painting to really hold this netting down on there. You don't want that. You want it to be a little bit loose just so the edges of the pattern are not too sharp. It'll help it blend in, okay? Now I'm gonna take my medium paint. Need my hands. I'm gonna take my medium brown here, which is the satin. When you do this, it's just like we were painting before, but you want to do it with one pass and really lightly. Not a really heavy coat of paint. It's going to look like so. I'll probably put another one in there. Maybe hit the corner. That's it. It ends up looking kind of like that. So now we're going to do the same thing on the rifle. 
But luckily, this net is large enough I can probably get the whole rifle. Now the trick to <clears throat> the trick to putting down your pattern is use one coat lightly and don't get too wrapped around the axle about it looking perfect. I got quite a bit of OCD and this is often where I'll make one minor mistake and get all bent out of shape about it. It's taking me time to get over that and just kind of go with it. I prefer to do long swaths of paint as opposed to short ones. the top of the stock. See if I can get the top of the optic real quick. I can tell you I just put it on too heavy right there, but that's no big deal. So that's the first pass. You can kind of see that pattern coming out. It'll look a lot better when we do two more passes. And I put it on too heavy right there, but that's no big deal. We'll clean it up. Give this a few minutes to dry and then we'll uh, do our darkest color. Okay, now that first little bit of pattern's all dry. Uh, it's only a few minutes later, I'm not gonna lie. I borrowed my girlfriend's hair dryer and spit up the process. Little trick. Now we're gonna add the darkest color pattern. And this is the one that really makes the pattern pop. Um, when I do this pattern, I generally try to keep everything going the same way, the same direction. Uh, I think it looks sharp that way. Some people like doing it at angles or perpendicular, it doesn't really matter. It's up to you, play with different things. See what you like. Uh, I like using the netting. Some people like using natural vegetation, uh, leaves and grass and stuff, and they throw it on there and they'll spray around the leaves and the grass. And that's, that looks sharp. It's, it's probably, uh, probably better as far as performance goes for concealment in the end. But uh, I like using the netting because I think it looks cool. It looks consistent and I dig it. So now we're going to add our earth brown. Once again, we're just going to do a real light spray. I'm going to do a test spray, make sure it's spraying good. Just try to do one pass. Let's see if I can get some hair on the back of the stock again. I did kind of a crap job last time I get the top of the rail. So I'm gonna try to put this down here. I'm gonna put a little bit of the satin on top of the top of the rail again. Get that optic. Come right back with the brown. Hit the barrel real quick. here it's about right let's see how that worked out part of the truck is getting this net off without getting it hung up okay so now you can really see that pattern starting to come out Now what I'm gonna do, some people would be done right here as far as the pattern goes. 
I like to come back over it again with the medium and try to line up the uh, the medium brown on that black and it really gives some depth to that pattern on that third pass. So we'll dry it off real quick and see how it works out. So here we are a few minutes later. I had a little more earth brown off camera just in a few tight spots where I wanted a little more. It's kind of tricky to do with one hand but uh, get the general idea where we're at. Now I'm going to add this last little bit here a little more satin on top of that earth brown to try to give the uh, pattern a little more depth give it kind of that snake skin look I actually spent quite a bit of time on the back of the scope there because I kept I wasn't really happy with it so I kept trying to screw with it some more um, problem is if you want the paint to be generally really thin the more paint you add um, you're just gonna start adding problems it's gonna start cracking it's gonna start puddling running it's just not gonna look right so instead of cha trying to chase out perfection just be happy with what you got and know that in six months it's gonna start wearing and flaking off in a couple spots anymore gain some character and you're not even gonna notice it anymore so I'm gonna get my satin and we'll do one more pass over that heavy dark stuff. Real light. You'll kind of see the effect. Adds just some depth to the pattern. Like I said earlier, big thing is take your time, don't rush. When you rush, start making mistakes. Start trying to add stuff when paint's still a little bit wet. You smear to put a fingerprint in there, and you gotta start redoing stuff. Half the trick on these scopes is trying to get that netting to lay where you want it to. So you can hit that spray just right. For this to dry off to the other side and then we'll do another video where I can show you how it looks okay so here we are the next morning uh, the gun dried overnight and it is pretty much done now I'll give you a look at that pattern so this morning I still had to do some touch-ups on a couple spots I wasn't quite happy with uh, just a little short I basically wanted more brown on uh, this side, on the receiver side here, I want a little more brown in this pattern. Uh, when you're doing that, it's real handy to have, once again, a hair dryer. And because it's just a real small amount of paint, that's a real thin coat, you can actually uh, go through that pretty quick. Um, resist the urge to keep fucking with the pattern. Um, I get a little OCD on these, and well, I want a little more brown here, a little more tan here, and whatever. And I can just sit there all day and, and fuck with it and fuck with it. And honestly, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because in six months, it's all going to wash anyway. Now, 
technically it's pretty dry now, but uh, these things, depending on the temperature, take a couple days to dry, to fully dry and cure. So be gentle with them, leave them somewhere, maybe by a vent in your house, and it'll, it'll dry off. Um, if you play with it too early, it is going to crack a little bit. It's going to crack anyway. Uh, some people like finishing with a layer of clear coat, like a nice flat clear coat, because it'll help protect that paint. Um, I don't like doing that because I don't like using more paint than I have to. Also, I think that little cracks and dings that it gains over time give it character, make it look used, make it look more realistic. So understand with use, uh, some of this paint is going to come off no matter what you do, uh, whether you use clear coat or not. Um, some, uh, within a couple games, uh, the paint here, where I have my cheek weld to come off, the paint here by the back of the grip will come off. That's just pretty common. Uh, once again, just adds character to it. So that's it for this video. That's how I paint guns. Uh, let me know what you think below. I have a lot of success with this method. Obviously, there's a lot of other methods out there, but this is what I use. So uh, thanks for watching.